and the place of remembrance, Tuf und Söhne. Um, some of you I already know from this morning, but I'm sure you all know the old synagogue because you joined the guiding tour in the morning. So you know already a, a lot of the places which are part in this project. The old synagogue, the mikve, and the small synagogue. Maybe you also have visited. My name is Julia Roos. I work in this network, Jewish Life in Erfurt. I'm responsible for the educational program. And next to me, that's Rebecca Schubert. Yes. Um, I'm working at the Tom von Sons Place of Remembrance at the Mem Memorial Education staff. And yeah, we both worked out this project. And in this workshop, we have three parts. First of all, we are going to introduce the different historical, different historical sites to you. Um, historical sites of Jewish history or sites concerning the Holocaust, which you are working with in your um, profession. And what are the difficulties you see and of course the potential you, you see in this. But before we are also interested in um, getting you to know, and we have some questions. And we, we are happy if you could say some words, um, where you are, uh, who you are, where are you from, what's your profession, and what's your special interest in this. I'm from Berlin, I'm a teacher in the world history. My name is Jan from Berlin. I'm from uh, the Netherlands. My name is Berit Lundberg, Lundberg, from Norway. For my special interest, uh, I'm a member of History Teachers Association in Ukraine, and we cooperate for about nine years with the Ukrainian Center for Holocaust Studies, and work as trainers in uh, issues in workshops on Holocaust issues. So it's where I am working for, so the places of Jewish life and presence which are still here in airport, um, active used or used uh, as a museum or meeting center like the small synagogue and how they give us the chance to learn more about uh, Jewish history and religion. Um, this picture you all have seen today in reality, that's the west facade of the old synagogue, the oldest synagogue in Central Europe, um, 100 years old. This is our main house in this network, Jewish life in Erfurt, because most of the people who visit Erfurt start their, um, their tour about Jewish life in the old synagogue, because it's the oldest synagogue and the Erfurt treasure is there and you also got most of the information about Jewish life in the old synagogue. Um, if you look at the old synagogue, um, you can find a lot of traces telling about the Jewish history. You all heard that in the morning that, um, that after the pogrom of the 1349, the synagogue was transformed and new, uh, used as a storehouse. A storehouse. And so you can read all of this history if you look at the building of the Sonaba. Um, this map you may also have seen this morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. like Jews and Christians lived together before the pogrom of 1349. Um, this is the ground floor of the museum where you can see the first floor, which goes back on the time when the merchant um, built the synagogue into a storehouse and the Air Force treasure which we show in an ex exhibition in the cellar of the synagogue. You also have visited the mikve, all of you? Mm -hmm. Great. Just outside. Just outside. Mm -hmm. It's how she looks inside. <laughs> um, it's the ritual bath of the Jewish community, but not only of the first Jewish community, but also used by the second Jewish community, which started to settle in Erfurt five year, years after the pogrom. So in the Middle Ages, we had the first Jewish community, which used the old synagogue as a house of prayers, 
when the pogrom took place and the whole Jewish community was killed, about 900 members of the Jewish community, <coughs> the old synagogue was used as a storehouse from this day on, but there was a second medieval synagogue built by the city council, and the Jewish community which used this second synagogue could use the mikve for around 100 years, and then the city council decided to expel all the Jews from airport. And um, from that moment on, in the middle of the 15th century, the mikve wasn't used as mikve anymore. It was discovered by archaeologists um, five, six years ago. Um, Napoleon was the one who allowed Jews to come back to airport. So we had 350 years where it wasn't allowed for Jews to live in airport. And at the beginning of the 19th century, um, Napoleon said that this law is not allowed and Jews are allowed to come back to airport. And we have a third Jewish community which built this synagogue, the small synagogue. Have you been there also? Yeah, great. <laughs> um, it's also part of this network, Jewish life in airport. So we have two sides of the time of the mid, um, Middle Ages, so the old synagogue and the mikve. We do not have the cemetery because it was destroyed at the end of the Middle Ages, and we do not have the second medieval synagogue. From the 19th century, we have the small synagogue. And from the Jewish life at the moment, so of the 21st century, we have the new synagogue. So we have three synagogues in Erfurt, the oldest from the Middle Ages. The um, exhibition, the engineers of the final solution, Top von Sands, builders of the yeah. Auschwitz ovens. The exhibition was in Denmark and Maut, Maut, uh, it was in Mauthausen and in, um, in, the, uh, in Denmark, in, in Copenhagen, it was. Mm -hmm. Especially groups from, um, from abroad or groups um, out of, uh, yeah, uh, Oh, yes, groups from abroad uh, com combine these two uh, these sites, the so sites of Jewish history and the place of remembrance. And yeah, uh, no, thank you very much. Have a look at this place of remembrance. So we think that for um, remembrance and commemoration, we need to get information and we have to understand what was going on. This is the former administration building of the top and sounds company and you see this slogan here, always willing to serve you. Um, this is what it's all about for, for us to say. Um, this was the um, company's um, um, slogan, to say. And, but, but here on the, on the former administration building we didn't name um, the, um, the source, the historical source. We can also use it today, and this is, um, gives us also a link to our link to our project. We want to introduce to you uh, what are the um, actual uh, the challenges in, in our nowadays everyday life. Historical documents and the learning by research in the historical documents is our central method in the. Um, education course. The, this, this strongest contrast between the Jewish history and the um, company's um, complicity in the genocide. Second, that visitors from abroad um, always linked these different sites um, against the, um, the anxious of the, uh, of this, uh, major of, of F, for example. And the third reason reason was that um, we think that all these different historical sites have a really high potential to talk about actual challenges in everyday life in the, um, based on the, on the history. And when we present these um, different historical sites, we are discussing a different perspective. We always discuss the uh, perspective of the non-Jewish majority and the Jewish minority. 
And yes, the third goal I um, focused on the um, this strong contrast. And our fourth goal is to yeah to talk about um, actual challenges. We saw that based on the on the history on the on the program in 1349, we can ask what um, stereotypes about Jews do I know um, even today? And our goal is that we um, get aware of that um, stereotypes are necessary in our everyday life, that we, um, that we cannot be impartial, but we have to be critical of Pre-justices. Um, based on the history of the Jewish and German history in the 19th and 20th century, we um, we are talking about, for example, persons who get famous in Arab society, um, but they didn't get the whole rights as citizens because their origins are Jews, Jewish. And we now ask the participants um, who or what circumstances have an impact on, on the identity of the persons we, we introduce them and um, also on their own identity. To your school so that you can use them for your educational program or maybe you already do that. So, do you see by including this authentic places of historical or contemporary Jewish life as well as of the Holocaust in your education? A is we, we like to divide you into two small groups and in these groups we would like you to tell each other about the mentioned Jewish places or places referring to the Holocaust and about the experiences you made during your work there with school classes. And instead of B, we want you to discuss or reflect on question two about the risk and opportunities of these places and to write down your main arguments to finally introduce your arguments to the whole group. So that you have 20 minutes time for discussion to talk about the places you know and you use for your education and to find the main arguments, those and opportunities and authentic places have. And then we have 10 minutes per group to present the arguments, maybe. Perhaps we take 15 minutes and... Maybe. She, she told uh, us... Uh, I'm of course, I as a German, or we as German, as a, um, a special responsibility. But if it comes to the difficulties, what, uh, which probably does sound a bit weird, but uh, um, we had, um, uh, if, if you do that in German, in history, in art, and so on, and and over and over again, you really have to be careful that you do not do it too much, so that the, the, the students lose their interest. This is one um, problem I, I, I do see. Um, the main thing is um, that, uh, for example, we go to... Google. This is the point about what for to make a, a butter knife, if it can be used for some other. Is it a moral issue? <laughs> Yes, and there you have the, um, the uh, option of, of acting, like I told uh, 
Exciting to see that every time you try to talk about Jewish history or presence, there are two main topics, the Holocaust and Israel, <laughs> dominating the discussion. That's, uh, I think, uh, the point I recognized again. Yeah, for me, uh, you mentioned it and I saw it also here uh, that um, it seems to be that people are tired of talking about the Holocaust. And that is what um, is linked to me, what, what you mentioned, that we have also, that we have with this historical site and with this historical seems we have the potential to talk about the, the actual, mm. actual challenges. And this is what um, for me is a very important thing. Um, when we talk about the history that we also have to face about um, our nowadays lives and what the challenges we have to face. This is yes, the last sentence from me and also... Just to be clear about this whole... Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. 